Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, I wanted to go over the bevel command. This is a command that I've wanted to do a video on for a long time. I just never have quite gotten around to it, but here we go. So the bevel command is a modeling command. It can be found in the modeling tool set. And you can find it under the edit mesh menu, bevel. I use bevel quite a lot. Uh, however, a lot of times I'll just use the default settings. But in this video, like we do in all tool belt videos, we're going to go over all these settings and show you exactly what they all do. And probably what usually happens when I do that is I'll find a setting that I did not really use before and find it to be quite useful and start using it in my day-to-day -day routine. So I definitely expect that to happen here since I use Bevel so much. In any case, though, we're going to go over all these options in just a minute. So Bevel, what does Bevel do? Let's create a polygon primitive. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is, but we'll just stick with a cube for now just to make it simple. And I'll scale it up. So beveling is also referred to as chamfer in some programs. So with the cube selected, I'll go to the edit mesh menu. Let's just take a look at the menu for a minute. So you can see here that the menu itself is divided into sections, all delineated with this line and a title. Each section has a title and most of them are referring to certain components of a polygon. So here you have your vertex section, your edge section, face section. So edges, vertices, faces, those are the main components of a polygon. However, up here we have a components section with these commands here listed, including bevel. So what that means is that these commands, such as bevel, can be used on any polygon component. You can use it on vertices, you can use it on edges, and you can use it on faces. You're not limited. Like these other commands here, such as duplicate under the face section, this duplicate command only works on faces. These commands work on all three. So over here with my polygon cube, I can right click it and choose an edge, a vertex, or a face. I can choose any of these three main components and then bevel them. So let's go ahead and choose face just so you can see it. I'll select the face, edit mesh, bevel. You can see immediately what happens is it chamfers the edges of the face that was selected. All four edges of that face have been beveled and it gives us this extra geometry through here. Also what opens up is this poly bevel one kind of a control panel that we can adjust the settings of the bevel that has been applied to the face. The main setting that you'll typically edit after applying a bevel is the fraction. The fraction value is how much of a bevel we have. Right now we're doing a fraction value of 0 0.5. If I click here on fraction and left click and drag, you can see how I can grow and shrink the size of the bevel that has been applied. If I hold down control while I do that, I get a much slower effect and it's a little bit easier to control. And that's because when I left click and drag, you can see what happens if you watch this number. It's modifying the fraction by tenths or point ones. So point six, point five, four, three, two, one, so on. Holding on control and left clicking and dragging modifies it by the hundredths value. So it's a bit more of a slower uh, change and in my opinion, a bit more controllable. So I typically when I do utilize any of these slider functions, I'll hold down control and edit them on the 100th scale as opposed to the 10th scale. Typically that works better for me. So I can control exactly how beveled the bevel effect is. If I want it to be a really large bevel like this or something more subtle like this. So that's the main, the fraction here is the main thing that people will typically adjust. The next thing beyond that is the segments or the number of segments in the bevel. By default, the segments is one, and we have this one face that has been added to where the edges were. I can increase the segments. Again, I can hold down control to do so. I can increase the segments by left clicking and dragging. You can see what happens is it adds divisions through the bevel and also gives you the gives the geometry space to kind of round out those edges. So it's not just a flat bevel, it can be kind of a round bevel. Let's go back to object mode. So you can also, as we selected faces in that demonstration to bevel, we can double click an edge to select an entire edge loop. I can hold down shift and double click and all these edges 
to select all four corner edges and then go to edit mesh bevel got some slight artifacting here but otherwise we can control the thickness of the four corners the bevels add a segment if we wish and we get a much uh, more rounder looking cube and that's how bevel essentially works now like I said we're going to go into all the bells and whistles of the bevel command and show you more of how you can use this tool let me have to look the cube here and we'll start from scratch so let's go ahead and make a new cube I think a cube is a good shape to practice on now scale it up to make it a little bigger all right so let's look at the options for our bevel I'm going to right click on my cube and select face I'll just select this face again to bevel another face edit mesh bevel options we'll click edit here and reset settings just so we have all of our default settings here so the first setting is the offset type we have our choices of fractional which it tells us here in the parentheses prevents inside out bevels or absolute and if we do choose absolute we get an additional offset space value which can be between the world or local if we choose fractional the offset space setting is grayed out let's do fractional real quick just see, like that's what we've been doing and I hit apply when a fractional offset type is selected what this essentially means is that the bevel itself will never be larger than the smallest edge that has been beveled so let's create we can do the cube again but this time I'm going to do this and now I'll select this face so now I'm going to bevel this face again hit apply and you see the bevel result we got was much smaller right let me undo that back and let's put the cube back to where it was select the face again and hit apply you can see the bevel is much larger now right it didn't maintain this large scale bevel after I had adjusted the shape in that this side of the cube was much smaller so therefore when I select this face to bevel and hit apply the fractional offset type means that the bevel will adjust based on the smallest edge over here it's not going to still be that large scale bevel through here and potentially become inside out that's what this means prevents inside out bevels let me undo that and choose absolute now again like I, when i do choose absolute we do have this offset space setting that we'll get to in a minute let me hit apply with absolute turned on you can see here already we have this inside out bevel here that's what's happening it's, it's ignoring the fact that this side is so much smaller and it's just beveling regardless okay so that's the difference between absolute and fractional bevels typically I'll leave fractional on but there are probably occasions where you might not care about this so much because you're going to go back in here for example if I were to grab these edges over here and say edit mesh merge and these vertices over here and merge them together I could get something like this if I knew that I was going to do that after I applied the bevel and I didn't care that it went inside out because I knew I was going to fix it after the fact then it wouldn't really matter and I can choose the absolute value let me undo all that and go back before the bevel so again absolute now with absolute chosen we get a couple options here I'm going to bring this edge back down since we're not worried about the scale of it anymore with absolute and we can look at the difference between the offset space of world which ignores scaling on the object like since here in parentheses or local okay so just for example let me grab this face again again absolute and world hit apply so it's essentially the same result we had before because I moved the edge back down it didn't really matter that it was a small edge but this is the size of the bevel that we get so let me undo that and choose local and apply much different result and the reason why that happened was let me undo and go back to object mode and select the object now here in the channel box you'll see we have scaled this cube up remember at the beginning when I created the cube I scaled it up just so it's large in my scene and you can see it better in the video 
So the scale x, y, z of the cube is, in this case, 5.9 something. Let's just go ahead and change that to 6 to get a nice round number. So again, when I select this face, and I'm using a local offset space, local means ob local to the object, and the object has been scaled 6 units. And so therefore, whenever I apply a bevel, the bevel will also be scaled 6 units. Hit apply. So the bevel has been scaled a lot based on the scale of the object. Again, you see here in the parentheses what it says here, if you choose world and not local, world ignores the scaling on the objects and it's not affected by it. So let me undo that again and choose world instead of local, hit apply, and we get this. So here we have our width setting, and this is going to come into play here with when it comes to local and world also. So with the width of 0.5, you saw what we got with our world setting. Hit apply again. And this is what we have with a width value of 0.5. That's the default value. Let me change this value to something much smaller. Let's say 0.1 and hit apply. So here's the shape we get with a 0.1 width with the offset space set to world, which ignores the scaling of the object. Let me undo that and choose local with a width of 0.1. Now you remember before, with the width of 0.5, we got that crisscross inside out effect. But when I hit apply now with a width of 0.1, it looks like the width of 0.5 did before, right? And that's because our cube has been scaled up six units with a width of 0.1. If you can imagine that scaling effect multiply as a multiplier to 0.1, it's up to like, say, 0.6, which is pretty close to 0.5, so we get a very similar result as we did when it was world at 0.5. Does that make sense? Let me undo that and apply here. So here it is at 0.5. Actually, what might be a good comparison is let me actually duplicate the cube, Control D. I'll duplicate this cube over, so we have two duplicates. This first one over here, I'm gonna select the face, world so it's, ab it's absolute offset type with a world offset space and a width of 0.5 okay hit apply now i'll select this one we'll say a local offset space but with a width of 0.1 and hit apply and again it's due to the scaling of the object now it's not exactly the same let me uh, go into object mode and select them both this one's actually a little bit bigger. And the reason why it's a little bigger is because it's 0.6 bigger. If this bevel over here, and I can actually go into the channel box here and change it, you can see here offset is 0.5. If I change this to 0.6, hit enter, it's actually identical to this one. If I bring them back on top of each other. So again, the reason why it's identical is because this object has been scaled up six units, scaled up six times, so a multiplier of six, and then this has been uh, beveled with a width of 0.1 multiplied by six gives us 0.6, which is what we're doing over here. So hopefully that makes sense as to what's happening and why it is. Let, you have to let me know in the comments if it's confusing. <laughs> Let's go back to just one here. So now we're back to our original cube and we can continue. Let's go back to fractional for now. So fractional instead of absolute. So next we have segments. We talked about that briefly already. The more segments you have, the more divisions in the bevel you get. If I select the face, increase my segments up and hit apply, you can see those added edges, those added divisions get uh, incorporated into the bevel when you make it. Undo that and take this back to one for now. Next we have is depth, and by default the depth is one. So let's look at this as it is. We select this face again. We're gonna get the same result we got before, obviously, with a depth of one. Let me undo that actually, and now let's try a depth of negative one, which is the slider brought all the way to the left side. And hit apply. And we don't get much difference. So the reason why is because this depth slider actually kind of is a bit dependent on the segments that you have. So let me increase the segments up again and hit apply again, but this is a depth of one. Take my depth down to negative one. 
and hit apply. And now you can see what happens once we have some divisions added, that depth has become an inverse. You can see here it's that same circular shape. However, instead of it being rounded out this way, it's being rounded inwardly this way. So a negative one depth gives us this kind of shape with our bevels, while a, a positive one gives us the other. And as you can imagine with the depth of zero, we're in between kind of a pyramid uh, shape with no roundness either way. So that's pretty useful, especially if you want to get that inward, this kind of shape with your bevel. Typically, without knowing about this kind of setting, you'd have to kind of do this manually, which is a bit of a pain. Let's take this back to positive one for now. Let's keep let's keep a couple segments in here just so we can see more uh, interesting results as we go forward. All right, so next we have mitering and miter along. Could be I'm mispronouncing that. It might be meter, possibly, but I think it's miter, but I'm not sure. In any case, mitering and miter along. Right now, they're both set to auto or automatic. If I choose the, if I click on the pull down menu for mitering, you can see the results. You can see the options that we have. We have auto for automatic, which is the default setting, uniform, patch, radial, or none. Now, mitering refers to intersecting beveled edges and how they relate to each other, especially when dealing with other edges that are not being beveled. Okay. So, in order to really show this let me make a new shape because i don't think this will work for the regular cube and then i'm going to go to edit delete by type history just to remove all of the history that has been caused by the bevel um, by the extruding so let's say i want to select these two faces and bevel them and we have these edges over here that are intersecting into this point. So mitering kind of comes into play when this is happening. So with an automatic mitering setting, also miter along is also set to automatic, what happens is Maya will choose what it believes is the best option of these to apply to the situation. So let's see what it does. I'm going to hit apply. So what we can do here, I'm going to minimize this, and over in the channel box, you can see here I have the mitering setting as well as miter along. We can actually go back here and change this and see the results that we get. So this is with automatic turned on. So let me change this to uniform. So a uniform mitering gives us this. So you can see what happens. Let me go to object mode for now. So you can see how it comes to this kind of a point here. And it's attempting to bevel these faces together that are intersecting and also reconcile this point coming from these other edges as well. So I can understand why Maya didn't choose this option as I, yeah, it does not get a very clean result. So uniform would not have worked well here. Let's go to patch. So patch kind of gives us this result. And it looks kind of like it's patched in all these edges here. Now this option is not necessarily bad, what we're seeing here. However, it does add a lot of geometry causing these two faces here to be very ingaudy, while the uniform one did attempt to keep these as quads, which will go can, can be beneficial depending on what you're doing. With all these added edges through here, it does make these a bit more problematic when it comes to trying to maintain quads. So that's patch, and after that is radial. So radial kind of gives us this kind of shape, which is nice. This is something I have seen Maya choose before because typically people will keep automatic on and I have seen this sort of a result when I've done bevels in the past. But with a radial, you get this kind of radial pattern of edges through here and then it attempts to reconcile this point in this way. Again, not exactly the cleanest. And then none is what it actually chose when we had it on auto which we can flip it back to auto, you can see nothing changes. So definitely this one does give a nice result. Again, this face is not uh, maintained as a quad, but again, it could be something that could be fixed depending on what you're uh, attempting to make here. Well, now let's choose, let's look at miter along. Right now it is also set to automatic, meaning that Maya chooses what it feels is the best option of the three that we have here, which are center, edge, or hard edge. So if mitering 
is set to something that is not none, then miter along will come into play. If it is set to none, like it is here, then miter along will do nothing, okay? Because no mitering happened, which essentially what this mitering uh, is trying to do is see what it can do with this corner over here. With uniform, you see we come to this long point. With patch, again, a point. And then with radial, still this point. But with none, we get no point at all. All right, so let's say I'm going to bevel this corner edge here. So I have these two edges selected. I'll go to Edit Mesh, Bevel, like this. This is also might be a good uh, demo demonstration for that Miter Along option. So right now it's on Auto. But let's say I put Mitering to Uniform. Let's increase the segment so we get a little bit more. Here we go. So mitering is uniform, or it could be patch. Uh, patch doesn't really work too well. Let's try radial. Okay. Anyway, a miter along, if we say center, you can see the difference. We say the edge or the hard edge. So you can see with that angled bevel coming in, the differences between miter along is a bit more dramatic. And you can see how you may choose one over the another based on how the these differences are being applied. Such as in this case, I don't like that one. Let's change to here. This one looks pretty good. And let's try center. Center's okay, but I think I like uh, edge best. Let's try auto. So auto did center. So I think I would have Wanted, I would have wanted to override that and choose the edge like this. So next we have a checkbox for chamfer. But what chamfer actually is referring to, in this case anyway, is whether or not the bevel is actually going to be slanted. Okay. So for example, let's let's just keep this bevel that we have here and go back to the channel box and change it here as opposed to looking at it here. But chamfer is a checkbox on or off. And you see here it's chamfer on. If we turn it off. And then you see what happens is that it removes the slope of the bevel, okay? It keeps the bevel geometry aligned with the rest of it. There's no actual slope applied to the geometry itself, okay? So that's what chamfer being checked on or off does for the bevel. Let's turn it back on for now. Below that, we have smoothing angle. Now, if chamfer is turned off, there's something to keep in mind is that depth goes away because we don't have that inner or outer uh, roundness due to these number of segments. That's what, remember, that's what depth did. And so if we're not getting that slope effect with chamfer being turned off, then depth also gets turned off, right? We can turn it back on and depth comes back. Next is smoothing angle, which is set right now to 30 degrees. Now, this is based on the surfaces the edges being hardened or not with a threshold of 30 degrees. This is very similar, if not the same, as the, if we go to the mesh display menu, there's harden and soften edge. If you go in, if you were to apply, let's say, supply a soften edge, just for example, and it'll click over here, you can see the angle of the softened edge is 180. Let's change this down to 30, and we get this result. It's a 30 degree angle to the softened edge and see what happens now this gives us that's a threshold essentially if we take this down to zero it's a harden effect and it hardens all the edges so let me undo back before the softened edge was applied so but now we're back to our bevel and we see here smoothing angle 30 degrees i'm going to click on the name and then middle mouse click and drag and you see as I go down from 30 to 0, we get that same kind of edge hardening effect. Okay? It's essentially the same as softening or hardening the edge. It's just applied to the bevel, to the edges that are created by the bevel. If I increase the smoothing angle back up, say all the way up to 180, for example, it softens it overtly throughout. So you, typically a default value of 30 works fine. 
if you do find that some edges are hardened when you want them to be, you might try increasing that value. So this is the following day after recording uh, the previous part of this video. I thought, yes, this video is long, um, but if you are wanting to know all the ins and outs of the bevel tool, I don't want you to have to look in multiple places. So what I think I'm going to do is just keep going. Um, feel free to ignore this part if it doesn't interest you, but I'm just going to keep going and try to find all the little ins and outs about the bevel command that we haven't gone over yet. And I'll select the face and go to Edit Mesh, Bevel, and here in the options I'm just going to go to Edit, Reset Settings, get all, all back to the default values, and hit Bevel. So a couple things here I wanted to show you. This Poly Bevel toolbox that pops up after you apply a bevel simply has the fraction which controls that size of the bevel here the number of segments you can increase or decrease here there's also the depth value which you can go from one down to negative one like this then there's the mitering and miter along settings you can choose from and then chamfer on or off which again that takes away the when you click it it takes away the curve of the bevel if you turn that off. Okay, so that's what this little thing here does. If you click on this little button here, you can see here we have other options that we can add on to this toolbox that we have here. Offset as fraction, force parallel, let's just check them all on offset, angle tolerance, subdivide ingots on or off, we have merge vertices on merge vertex tolerance, and then smoothing angle. So all these different settings can be added to this box if you want them to be. So fraction depth chamfer, and then we have offset as fraction on or off. And literally that's whether you are going to use, let's go back to the bevel options again. Remember you can say fractional or absolute. So that's switching between fractional or absolute here. Offset as fraction off means it's absolute. Offset as fraction on means that it is fractional like we've seen before. Then we have an option called force parallel, which you can turn on or off here. We'll get back to that in just a second. We have offset value. And also notice, by the way, all these different settings that are in this box can also be found over here in the channel box. Even if we turned all these things back off, if we went back to reset, for example, so we have the original settings that came with the bevel command, all those other settings that we can add to this box can be found over here also. So it's not like you can only get to them by adding them to here with these checkboxes. You do have those options always available over here in the channel box. And when you have the object in object mode like this, under here in the inputs, you can click on poly bevel one and get back to all these. If you want that box to pop back up after applying the bevel, again, clicking the poly bevel one input, if you go up to modify, transformation tools, show manipulator tool, this little box will pop back up. That's under again, modify, transformation tools, show manipulator tool. So what are all these extra options? What do they do? Now, the other option I wanted to talk about, let's change this back to auto. All right, let's take the segments back down to one just to make the uh, force parallel a bit more obvious. And let's choose, I don't know, let's try this. Okay, so we have this set up here. I, I applied my bevel to these two edges and I've gotten this result. Now what does force parallel do? I want you to pay closer attention to the shape that we have, we hide the grid for now. And I'm just gonna add force parallel right here. So if force parallel is right now it's off. I click it on, you can see the geometry change. Click it off again, on, off, on. Now what force parallel is doing is it's forcing the bevel to be parallel to each other. If I click it off again, you could kind of see that the two lines here that are making up the beveled edge are not parallel to each other. But if I click on force parallel, now they definitely are.
parallel to each other. So you can increase our segments back again, and you can see the difference once we have a bit more, a bit more rounder edges, that difference is a bit more subtle. But forcing the parallel on, I do think, depending on the situation, can give you a nice, nicer clean junction at corners like this. All right, what else can we talk about? Let's control A, go to the attributes here. You can select the poly bevel tab. And here you have a lot of the same settings that we've been talking about already. Force parallel, turn on, you can chamfer, you have your mitering options, depth, segments, fractions, so on. So now there is a cleanup section. You can subdivide ingons, you have angle tolerance, you can merge vertices and so on. And again, this comes into play more when you have a lot of different um, intersecting beveled edges that could possibly cause uh, issues. Let me just see if I can't select a whole bunch of different edges and possibly cause a potential issue that this these commands might come into play. Edit mesh bevel. Okay, so with this bevel, you can see here, subdivide ingons is turned on, as well as merged vertices is turned on. Let's turn the subdivide ingons off and see what changes, if anything. So here you can see what I did was I've increased the merge tolerance of the merged vertices cleanup option. So what you can do, it seems, is you can bevel your edges. But let's say you only wanted certain edges of that selection to actually be beveled. You want ones that are too close together, maybe to merge back together. If the bevel was too small in certain areas, again, because of the fraction, where it can only go so large, maybe you can turn merge vertices on here, increase your merge tolerance so that any beveled edges that are smaller than you'd want to keep get merged back together. And so as I increase it here, you can see that what remains is a certain number of these edges and not all of them have retained the bevel. Otherwise it quote unquote cleaned it up by merging certain uh, edges of the bevel when they were too close together based on this merge tolerance that we have. Anyway, as you can see, this video is incredibly long. In general, bevel works pretty much fine right out of the gate. Where things get interesting is when you have intersecting beveled edges like we have in this case where the mitering and the depth and so on may come into play as well as these cleanup set settings that we have here let me go back to the uh, channel box so lots of interesting things here with the bevel command i hope you learned a lot about how the bevel command works and use it more often uh, thanks again for watching and i'll talk to you later